Marconi's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart, and yes, 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 I'm trying to multitask here. So uh, this week we are again, again, uh, sponsor free, so it's just me saying hello to you. Uh, I sit down, uh, I, I got it must have been two years ago now, or a year and a half, but I sat down with a good friend of mine, childhood friend, Charles Justice, who is now, at the time he was leaving to go to Florida, pursue a career he is back and now he's a stand-up comic and you know how much i love comedy uh, and then of course my good friend justin jerfy the owner co-founder of ingenious brewing here in houston uh if you follow us on social media you see that i gave them a just a fantastic note of love in regards to uh one of the releases from this past weekend justin comes on today for us to talk about everything going on at ingenious the way the beer culture has shifted from being not so cynical to very much uh, a fanboy audience of what Ingenious is doing, which is great on him. And uh, and then, of course, <clears throat> we've talked about it on the show a little bit. Don't ask me which episode, but uh, Old St. Nick was a very, very well-known brand many years ago and is highly coveted um, within the bourbon community. They relaunched their brand uh, this year, and uh, Justin, who Old St. Nick is very special to him, decided to bring those bottles onto the show today. So we taste the new product. No spoiler alerts. And uh, so, yeah, we just sit, we have a few beers, we talk about everything that's going on, and uh, a good time was had by all. So uh, without further ado, uh, actually one more thing. Uh, merch for the show can be found at whiskeymerch.com. Yes, that's whiskey with the E, merch.com. And uh, yeah. Check out Houston Bourbon Society on Facebook. And without further ado, Justin Jerfy and Charles Justice. Cheers. Hey, it's been a while. I know last time you were here, Charlie, you yeah. were about to leave on an adventure to, to Florida. Yeah, yeah. And gave yeah. up your entire life here. Yeah, gave away everything, packed oh. it all in a van, went to, my, went to Miami. Oh, you're right. and I against my wishes too because I tried real hard to get you to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you every day. You're like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> I didn't talk to you much, but you were just like, you know what? You're making mistakes. And yeah, I was yeah. like, I gotta make these mistakes, Dad. Let me go. <laughs> it's been a running uh, dad joke thing of uh, just wanting. I want what's best for you, and and you've, you've you're back now. Uh, life yeah. is returned to normal. Yeah, except that van has now been killed. Yeah, uh, I got hit by a tornado yesterday. <laughs> and I, I have this theory. It's like um, God doesn't want me to have all the windows in my cars. <laughs> like uh, so, for a long time, my front window and my Mazda was broke. I got it fixed, and then a homeless guy broke the back window in the Mazda. Sure. I let that go for like a year. I was like, you know, this is a hundred dollars every time somebody wants my change. And then um, so I finally got the back window of my Mazda fixed. And then our tornado destroyed your van. <laughs> just took a tree limb and threw it through my windshield in my van, and it was like, "There's another hundred dollars." You know, I can't. It, I feel like windshields at least three hundred. Yeah, I mean, I you're definitely. You're gonna, I mean, I'll go to like a pick and pool or something like that. You know, because a '95 Chevy. Sure, you know, sure. So. I doubt they're making current windshields like yeah. that. Uh, well, the important thing to remember about all that is that I can't let you borrow any money for your windshield. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Losing an investment there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, we'll see how it goes. So, And Justin, uh, owner of Ingenious Brewery, co-owner, co-founder. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming by. Uh, we talked a little bit. Right before, I know you've, what you've got in front of you is the, the new generation and a peppered in with the last generation of uh, a pres was it Preservation Distillery uh, in Kentucky. They, they did the Old St. Nick line, uh, the world-famous Old St. Nick line. You purchased their current products. 
And uh, we thought we'd talk about that today, as well as the fact that you just had a massive release this weekend, all sold out, and you've got a couple new fun things in front of you. And I would love to start with one of your beers. So yeah, sure. feel free to guide us in the direction which beer we should start with, and let's get pouring. Okay, excellent. Um, I think we'll start with the our, our fancy Invisible Enemy bottle. Um, because this is a whiskey show, I think uh, we should start with something that has seen whiskey. And whiskey relevance, the, yeah. The so that is something that I've always applauded. I applauded you back then that I, I've always loved the artwork on your beers. But Ingenious has actually gotten in exponentially more efficient and better and creative with their labels. In front of you, for those hold it up to the camera and you can oh, let them yeah. see it, uh, it just says Invisible Enemy. We're in the middle of lockdown or on the tail end of it. If you hold that label under a black light, you can see a little coronavirus bug. Uh, oh, correct. Yeah. So the whole label is so covered sick. with coronaviruses under black light, but it's only visible under black light. You guys help yourself. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You, you this pour, glass? Yeah. Wait, whatever glass you want. There's that one, but there's like I, cuts in the glass. This is like the only thing I don't like about like craft. Uh, beverages is that there's different cups for everything i wouldn't worry about that yeah, yeah. yeah i don't worry too yeah, much yeah we're just we're just so. we're just drinking beer Th- this it's and for those who don't know it's what is it it's a barrel aged so yes this is a 14 percent uh barrel aged russian imperial stout that uh was aged in blanton's barrels for 14 months Ooh, i love Blanton's. yeah Blanton's good stuff and uh the uh, adjuncts we used for this one was toasted coconut and marshmallow fluff. So when we pulled the beer from the barrels, we adjuncted it um, to taste. And Brandon, you want bottled. some of this? Yeah, a little barrel aged uh, stout it's here. It's amazing. So, so you get definitely get the whiskey booze in it, but the adjuncts add a little bit of a sweetness. Not too sweet. I don't want it chloringly sweet, um, but it just rounds out the flavor. And uh, have you done the mouth? Uh, the math. The mouth. The math. The math on the calorie count on this beast. We, we, don't, were, we don't recommend doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to we were trying to figure out the math, and uh, 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 I forget who said it, but he said a uh, safe bet for just a regular stout, a regular beer is about thirty calories per ABV point. That only puts this at f- just under 500 calories. Then you throw in adjuncts and everything else to it. I mean, and the fact, and that's per 12 ounces, right? This is this is more than that. What is this? 16. Uh, we're getting we're getting too caught up with calories here. We're gonna have 500 to mils. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's just Im- I'm in the middle of a weight loss competition with Todd, and for those oh, for go. those watching at home, Todd. Uh, his fat ass fell off a bike this week and broke his leg in three places. So, oh my god, <laughs> he, he's going to be sitting at home eating food during this competition. Uh, he was doing like something like five m- bike ride miles a day. I, I heard he was so fat he couldn't tell it was swollen. You know, he was just he he, he had he, he he said he knew he broke it immediately, uh, and then he had to, his wife never answers her phone. He had to wait 20 minutes in the baking sun for her to check her messages. Like he had just had an argument with her about it. Like <laughs> you never answer your phone. And then she didn't answer her, his phone, uh, her phone when he said that he had snapped his leg. So turns out he definitely broke it three places. He's going to be out of commission for six weeks. So he's going to have to do this whole weight loss competition on the couch. In the meantime, I'm enjoying my Yeah, beer. no, it's safer just to sit yeah. on the couch and drink beer. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's safer so, for sure. Uh, so thick. Yeah, dude. It's so every time ingenious, like every time I've had an ingenious beer, it's always the most interesting thing that I've ever drank, <laughs> and it's like really good. You yeah. know? I mentioned this on social media, uh, specifically with the Invisible Enemy oh. beer, and I said it just before we started recording. <clears throat> I, 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 I've known you before Ingenious, correct? And uh, I could not be. Uh, more excited about just the addition of your brewery to the Houston beer scene. You guys are yeah. more fun, Thank more you. adventurous. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not just here to, to blow you. I've had some things I, I, that haven't been my favorite, but you guys have tried everything, and it's always been, yeah, let's do it. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's do this. Let's do, I love your Froyo beers. I've had a couple of your milkshakes recently. Yeah. I loved your cherry sour. Or it was a cherry goes. The the chief cherry yeah chief cherry I, it was a sour fruit yeah. sour yeah it was fantastic yeah. uh, I I I tore through uh, most of this weekend's release uh, slightly before they were released <laughs> 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 um, but you guys are just you guys are really I'm really happy to see uh, just everything you guys are doing and the and and we recently dropped off so for the Houston whiskey social 
we had a very tobacco heavy, very tobacco rich Four Roses pick we did titled Robusto. Uh, it just, it was like thick, spicy, old world pipe tobacco, not that sweet stuff, not Cavendish, but more focused on the, the spiciness. I, I called Justin, or I reached out to you like right after your son was born. The, uh, or daughter, daughter. Daughter, daughter. Yeah. And uh, wow. I said, yes, I, <laughs> hey, it, she was just born. It was, like, <laughs> it was a week ago. It was a week ago. Um, I just said, hey, man, do you want to do, do a project with this, this barrel? And, and he said, absolutely. Like in the, in, in the midst of like cutting hold, the cord, cutting answering. the cord. And on my watch, I'm like, yeah, yes, I do. We'll take the barrel. And uh, yeah, so we, we took it up to um, Ingenious. You guys are going to be aging for about a year at least whenever it's uh, ready. Whenever it tells us when it's ready. But we're finding the, the sweet spot is 10. Uh, we've had one that was really good at 8. But 8 to 14. After that, it starts getting a bit too much tanniny. Just kind of whiskey. And it's the base for this one, right? The invisible. Uh, so the base that we put in the robusto um, is a fourteen percent. This uh, this one actually here started at thirteen percent, so it went up an ABV point in the barrels. The one that we were going to put in the robusto actually started at fourteen, so it'll probably end up at about fifteen percent. Oh wow! Um, so the base for, that we put in that barrel is called we call it Power. It's one of our Avenger Gemstone beers. Uh, it's named after the, the gemstone. But uh, so it's a it's a strong Russian Imperial Stout. Um, that I think will do real well with that. Uh, the profiles of that particular whiskey. So we're excited for that one for sure. I, I don't know if Derek mentioned this to you when I dropped it off, but on the way there, <clears throat> I just happened to have, I haven't had it in years, uh, peanut brittle in my car. And then I was eating peanut brittle. And I was like, man, peanut brittle is really good. And then I got to the brewery, had a little beer with some peanut brittle. And I was like, hmm, this, this brewery loves to do adjuncts. Have you guys ever done anything with peanut brittle? You know, I don't think we've actually used peanut brittle in a beer. Um, that's a very good idea. That's a very good idea. I, I think it would be very kismet, very fun, if we yeah. took this Four Roses barrel-aged stout and did something, however you uh, add your adjuncts, uh, at, uh, yeah, peanut no, brittle-wise. Let's do it. Let's make it. We just need a creative name. And But what we're going to do is, for those listening and you're in Houston, when the time comes, when it's ready, we're going to host an event at the brewery, yep. invite everybody out to for the release, and uh, sell them in, I guess these aren't bombers, but but glass bottles, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll bottle it and do it. So do it I think nice. it'll be fun. We we need a reason to get up there. It's the only problem not up there more is is humble is is or humble is is it humble? It's humble. Yeah, yeah, God. yeah, dude. Come I always on. I always Come mix on. those two. I mix I mix the vocabulary usage. Yeah. In the in the city uh, pronunciation pretty badly, so I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, no, it will be for sure. Yeah, that's the only reason why I don't go out there like every week. Well, I mean, other than the quarantine, it's just like humbles so far. So there's going to be like three, four tornadoes on the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't damage my van anymore, <laughs> man. I already don't have a windshield. Oh, man. All right, so what else did you bring? So I brought um, a one of our heavily, heavily fruited sours. We, we call it Fruit Madness because, I mean, that really is what it is. Um, it's borderline uh, a smoothie, essentially, with the amount of fruit we use in it. So this one we did um, for that same release, which was the, the theme was kind of Frontline Heroes. And so this one we call Frontline Madness. And uh, it has watermelon and, and strawberries and blueberries. Wow. Um, and marshmallows and also Twinkies went into this beer. So we do use some strange adjuncts. And you can get the Twinkie from it. So I think you'll you'll enjoy this one. Um, oh, I was like, you can get a Twinkie. Yeah, yeah. And dip it in your beer. You can, you can taste it. You can... It's Pick it up. I can't cool. get a Twinkie. Do do you find? I, I know what's common in the in the whiskey world. Do you find people frustrated with uh, traditionalism with beer? Uh, we, there's some vocal advocates out there amongst the social media scenes that that kind of. Uh, we used to get it more, but uh, they they argue against the. Uh, the smoothie beers and the that beer is like that's not beer that's a that's a mixed drink or a cocktail at this point that's not beer and um and actually it was hard to deal with that when we were first opening because we had such limited capacity to do what we wanted to do and frankly this was the, the adjunct heavy stuff was what people were buying more sure. frequently. So that's yeah. kind of what we had to focus on. Not that we didn't like Pilsners and Kolsch's and all this. Exactly. We, we prefer to drink those personally at the brewery. Um, but 
they just don't sell as well. And as we've gotten bigger and employed more and acquired new equipment, we do a lot more of traditional things. We had a Belgian strong this year. We've had, we always do a Pilsner now. Um, there's always a Pilsner on. We've had a Kolsch. Um, we've had a mild, a brown ale, a bunch of more traditional stuff. But even though there's those vocal advocates, they, they just don't sell as well. Sure. Uh, so we still, the, 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 the releases that are coming out are still very adjunct heavy because that we replace what gets sold. And so yeah. um, if you want more lagers, you got to buy more lagers. We yeah. went to, to Dallas this, uh, last week to, to bottle up some of this stuff. And uh, I have never been to 903. Yeah. Yeah. And the owner uh, came up to where we were bottling and I gave him a bottle of our rum and he brought just like a, case of different stuff the puff daddy and a bunch of different smoothie style uh beers fantastic loved them no complaint whatsoever i i don't know why anyone would have an issue with this even if let's just say it was defined as a cocktail at that point so what is it good drink it yeah that's Uh, how we feel i mean there what's that what's that uh brewery they got in trouble because their abvs were off but they were doing a lot of food stuff um um picture of 450 the, north. yeah yeah 450 I've, they were very popular as well too for their for their fruited their smoothie stuff correct and, uh I, I'm, I'm eager to try it this is the one i this is the only one i didn't get when well, i was up there i spent uh quite a bit of time and money while i was up there and, you started. and uh grabbed a little i've grabbed boys in blue and and uh healing power and the march speaking of which have you guys Ever gotten a cease and desist for the Simpsons characters? Uh, or? We haven't from the Simpsons characters. Um, we've gotten cease and desist before. Um, for but, any specific beers I know of? I think probably one of the stipulations of getting them is probably not <laughs> oh, to talk, not about, not about, talk about, about it. <laughs> I've gotten it. As long as I, I've gotten it on this show for from Maker's Mark. There was a, an interview we did with Gulf Coast Distillers here in Houston, and they told us on air that they just bought two column stills that were Maker's Mark stills. So I repeated the information. Oh, you guys have some Maker's Mark stills. That's fantastic. Holy fuck. Six months later, six months later, I get yeah. a very well-written email <laughs> for a cease and desist. I contacted my lawyer. I said, hey, can I talk about this? He's like, you can talk about it as long as you're not slanderous. Just, yeah. just talk about what it, what it is. Don't add any color yeah. commentary to it, and you'll be fine. Uh, and I just took the episode down. I didn't even fight it. But... Uh, I would I I saw the recent cast of characters for the cans and what I've always thought in this realm is especially with breweries is you guys do such small lots of, of beers a small such a small run that it's usually all gone before anyone says anything or has an correct issue and, and it's such small volume um, mm. that holy shit yeah it's that's, so that's good beer. that is intense <laughs> uh, such a small volume that we're not making a whole lot of money on these things. This is not something that they're going to come after us and say, hey, we want all those profits he made, because frankly, there wasn't a lot. It's more um, novelty of... The, and, and we do respect um, the rights, uh, you know, the intellectual property. We yeah. do respect those things. The reason these, and I'll say Simpsons themed, because there wasn't any... I mean, you could argue that Healing Power kind of looks like Marge, but the rest of them were just generic, yellow skin, kind of simpson More that style, that, yeah. More artwork style. Um, the reason we use that for this release is this release was a charity release. So we wanted something that grabs attention sure. to improve visibility and relatability. Um, and, and because, you know, again, even though everyone says, oh, you shouldn't steal intellectual rights, those beers do better. If you if you have something that people sure. can relate to, a video game from their childhood, a, a TV show. Oh, that's what the Heavy they, Hands with. Uh, yeah, it's got yeah. the the fighter guy. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's something that, and I and, and I don't know how it would relate to in merchandise, but satire is a, is protected. Correct. Satire is protected. Correct. So if you're making fun and teasing or some sort of uh, role playing, I mean, it, that's all within protected intellectual. Well, rights. parody too. Parody, I mean, parody yeah, also so, works uh, with that. You know, so. And what a lot of people don't understand is. The branding and intellectual rights are are category specific. So unless Fox Media, which is now owned by Disney, right. owned a alcohol Simpsons product, which I actually think they do called Duff Beer that they sell at Simpsons. But if they didn't have that, sure, <laughs> um, then they would have no legal basis to argue that oh, you're using things that are. Um, well, it's not like I think there was uh, originally. I think there was some beef between Family Guy and Simpsons over. The, that like style of kind of just yeah. kind of like I mean a little everything about it being kind of more of a 
not G-rated adult cartoon, you know? I yeah. mean, there was some, some stealing of, like, plot lines, and The Simpsons have done so many episodes that it's hard not to create yeah, exactly. the similar Simpsons. lines of thought. And it happens with comedy. And you haven't been on the show yet. I wanted to mention yeah. this. But uh, Chuck here, uh, when he came back to Houston, has become a full-blown, legitimate, paid stand-up comedian. Yep. And I, I'm a huge stand-up fan. Uh, and we were supposed to actually go see Brendan Schaub and them tomorrow, but someone got hired to do stand up elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, sort of. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a mix. I got up hired. There. The guy was like, yeah, Friday. And then uh, I was like, hey, guys, sorry I can't hang out with y'all. I got duty calls. So I sold your ticket to someone else. Right. And then he uh, texted me like the next, like, uh, like today, and he was just like, hey, by the way, that's for next Friday. By my bad, and yeah, I was like, bad. "You son of a bitch!" <laughs> yeah, all right, man. Well, uh, I I'm gave you such a hard time about leaving to Florida, but I, I'm really proud of of what you've done. I mean, yeah, I mean, living in Florida, I, it was something I had to do. You know, like because uh, I grew up in Pasadena, and, yeah. and I, I just had to get out and go see something else. And I like quickly realized that Miami is not what you think Miami is, you yeah. know? Like you it's see, not like, what the, it is in Dexter. <laughs> right. Yeah, or like Bad Boys or whatever. Sure, sure, <laughs> you sure. Know? <laughs> like, uh, Will Smith's not there? Well, I remember... That bridge has way more traffic. <laughs> I remember pulling up uh, to where I was going to park my van for a majority of the time, uh, and it, it was like right in between like Miami's ghetto called Overtown and then uh, the new like art district Wynwood. It was like the the separating block. It was the sure. only free parking in the entire city. And I pull up. Is this another window got broken story? No, 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 <laughs> no. My windows never got broken in Miami, which is crazy. But homeless people knew that I was living in there, and they would just come knock on the window to ask, you know, hey man, give me a blue Gatorade, <laughs> and I'm just like. Dude, I'm asleep. You know, like leave me alone. So, so there's different different levels of homelessness. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> homeless. I was, uh, I was Plus. Prince homeless. You yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. So like, uh, you were hot. You were bougie homeless. Bougie as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my bad. It's like, <laughs> it's like the economy plus seats. Um, oh, but man. yeah, Miami was great, and uh, it kind of helped me. <laughs> clear my head and I came back uh, and floundered a little bit, you know, but... Yeah, um, but no, I mean, you, you're you at the secret group. I mean, Andrew Youngblood's been on the show. Yeah. Uh, who's picked up a new whole career as an artist. He's doing really Dude, good. Dude, he's just, yeah, he's insanely, what the heck? He's, <laughs> he got a, I guess it's called an iPen or an Apple Pen or something? Yeah, he got the new iPad Pro with the Apple Pen. Whatever he's doing, the dude has found a natural talent for doodling, for drawing. Yeah. And uh, his artwork is very reminiscent of, of, like, early 2000s punk rock CD covers. Like it was, you know I mean, what I mean? That's his whole style. That's what he he dresses like a early two thousands post rock. I don't CD know, cover. man. I saw a picture of him the other day. He was wearing a gold Rolex with like a really flamboyant shirt. He looked yeah. like a nineteen eighties club owner that <laughs> well, he for was in, sure did a lot of cocaine. He was in Hawaii whenever he took that picture. He doesn't <laughs> tell that. He doesn't tell anybody that part. You know. Uh, well, non sequitur here. This is fantastic, dude. This is so good. And it just hit. It just it just hit me. Have you ever? Is there a beer, be honest now, Justin, be honest. I always am. Is there a beer that you guys make, or I know you guys like to come back and do another iteration of something. Sure. Uh, that, that does really well for you, but it, you just are not a big fan of the either the, the headache of making it or not a fan of the taste. Um, it's a big hit, I, I, you know, but you wish I, you could stop making it. It's interesting that we're drinking this one of these fruit madness because they're by far the most – intense beers to make just making one batch of it uh is more than a day's full of an employee adjuncting oh yeah it's it. it's delicious um, it's absolutely yes. delicious yeah. that's our our operations uh manager derek i mean he just he slaves over it and and i think that's what and we've tried to I want to say cut corners we've tried to can i read yeah, up yeah, on yeah, that yeah. One? yeah we've tried to <laughs> streamline the process and, and I can always tell. And one of the things that people who know me is the quality. It's so good, right? It's really good. It's, it's really, really good. good. It's definitely got that sourness to it. But uh, but I'm a huge fan. I, I was just – Derek, I, buddy, I just came and saw you Saturday <laughs> or Friday or Saturday to bring him that barrel. And I just told him, give me one of everything. And he put together a little thing. This was not in that in that everything. It was mm. probably finishing up that day. You, in fact, you probably delayed it. Frontline madness. <laughs> Have you ever had like a acai bowl? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. This is like a a beer <clears throat> a version, boozy of that. acai bowl. Like you should do a boozy breakfast, like brunch at the it's at the, the brewery, and just freeze one of these and let people eat it. We, so we we do we get a pretty strong brunch crowd sometimes. Yeah. When we have a good uh, gastro craft. Our kind of our good buddies who. Uh, make kick-ass food no matter what they're doing but uh, when they do a brunch we'll sell a ton of these we'll sell um, mimosas with beer we'll sell hard coffee we make hard coffee oh yeah so yeah. Uh, we do we do pretty good for brunch when we do that but um, you know so what I was saying is every time quality is number one and I mean that's that's what I care about I don't care about profits I don't care about uh, it's it just has to you have to have good quality and I'm not willing to cut corners and so every time we've attempted to make something that's comparable that doesn't meet my criteria. I'm like, no, sorry, Derek. Back to the cage. We got to get this. <laughs> Is that where you keep him? in the cage? <laughs> That's what we call his area. Yeah. Um, the uh, and I I haven't been in the facility since I dropped off our last jack barrel, which I think was two years ago. The amount of equipment you guys have gotten has just been is, is that I hate to overuse the word exponential, but you guys are, are really knocking out. You guys, have you talked about expanding the uh, properties? We have. We've we've looked into it and. Uh, they actually built a sister building right across the parking way. I mean, it shares a parking lot with us. Um, that we were looking into purchasing it, and the developer sold it to someone before they offered it, us the opportunity to buy it. Um, I think you guys should have a, a free – like, I, I love Southern Star's facility, right? They've got their own freestanding facility, uh, a B-52 in the woods, you know? Uh, you, what you guys are doing, and I hate to just fluff you up this entire time and not give you a hard time, but what you guys are doing is such a destination experience. We, we, yeah. we try. I mean, we really do. You we're want, close to the airport. You want to take the family up there. And, and we try. And so right now we're, we're putting in this brand new outdoor area um, that we've done ourselves. We spent, the, you know, we can't open the tap room for a couple months, so we just hard work. Well, I say we like I did it. Um, every one of the employees who, who spends their, their day there, um, all gave hands and, and, and worked, and they've built this outdoor facility that I think is going to be this year a lot more fun to bring your family and your dog out to and enjoy a beer than, than last year. Sure. Um, so, so yes, we've we've worked on expanding. We've definitely expanded equipment, like you've hinted on. We have new. We have one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars worth of new equipment coming in this month um, that will allow us to do even more things and get a broader audience and. Um, you know, we're real excited where the direction's going, and you know, we're thankful for the. I mean, really, the, the beer fans of Houston—they're the ones who are keeping us able to do this. You know, we make these crazy things because people are, like drinking them, and they like, sure. um, and we feel like that we we're executing them well, and that's um, it's just it's real fun. It's exciting for us. So yeah. The direction we're going. Well, I know you've I know you've been on Ian and Cruz's smoking and toasting a couple yeah. times. Definitely jealous, um, but I, I, I think. For me, and let me back up. So I, I know we brought you the Four Roses barrel to do a brewery release. But before that barrel got dropped in my lap and before I reached out to you and before the little baby showed her head, <laughs> uh, we talked about doing a, a, a wide release, uh, something that could be seen where you don't have to necessarily go visit the distillery. So uh, I definitely want to revisit that conversation. Uh, we did a... Uh, it equaled, I don't know what it equaled in terms of barrels. I want to say it was 600 cans of beer and 15 pony kegs, which was the first Nice Guy Eddie thing we did with uh, Southern Star. It was a coconut barrel-aged stout. We barrel-aged it for just over a year uh, and added vanilla and co- uh, vanilla, vanilla beans and coconut. Went very well. Saw yeah, it. Great beer. Saw yeah, it. Nice saw it. It was fantastic. Yeah. Fifteen different bars across Houston, and the cans went like this. I've got maybe four cans left. <laughs> I'm really stretching it out. Well, we want to ramp that up. Uh, Southern Star. We've, we've we've Corona kind of put a halt in that, but we are talking about a five thousand can yeah. statewide release, and we have the ability. Our last project, the very first beer project HBS ever did, was with you guys. It's a single barrel of Jack Daniels that we featured at the event. It and was it, good. It was very, it was good. very good. <laughs> uh, but now our our group is twice that size, and coming in at nine thousand members. We want to do something with Ingenious that is just. I mean, I want to get the. I want yeah. uh, that's what? just Ingenious. Yeah. yeah, I want to get the the wheels turning. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Now we we've got the capacity. We've got the, the all the pieces in place now. So we could do it. Uh, uh, right six, now, six, seven, eight, nine whiskey barrel release. I think we're uh, right now. I think what's currently aging at uh, Copperhead 
is seven barrels of Jack Daniels, and we're doing something called King of Taters. That's gonna be you awesome. know their King of Taters release. Yeah, Seth. King of Taters with peanut butter barrel aged stout. Seth at uh, Copperhead, he I mean he he kills it, and these stouts he makes are just ridiculous. I, Our employees like line up and. Uh, sometimes unsuccessfully try to get them because they're such you know a claim they, he, that's going to be good i think and i could be wrong and I, there may be some beer drinkers disagree with me on this i think when it comes to barrel aid stouts in houston uh it, it's hard i mean copperhead kills it i, I know spindle tops become famous for their ipas their hazies uh i don't i would love to see what we can do in terms of size and scope and distribution wise so we work with i know you guys are self-distributing tech in houston uh currently now we self-distribute just in houston market we have statewide representation elsewhere so we uh, nice. we work with all the big guys Bex and total wine and goody goody and and about 40 mom and pop stores so i can line those up i just want something as fun as what you're doing now yeah and something different and unique and fun that maybe isn't such a headache and maybe has a little bit better profit margin for you than some of the <laughs> super heavy fruited beers so. like I, I think the last time we were on it was like a was it like a blueberry blueberry crumble i crumble. remember yeah, yeah. yeah. dude <sighs> yeah, that's one of so our good. We, we make that you, you, every, you make it regularly right yeah at least yeah. every six months that's one of our and i've, I've always been a big fan of your froyos yeah the, the froyos yeah. just for me they're just they're fantastic just, so we've got one more segment left. I want to get into these old St. Nick's as we For sure. as we pour. Um, which uh, now you actually purchased these? These are the second iteration old St. Nick's. Yeah. So um, what would you start with, and let's work up in terms of your drinkability. The story of these is briefly. Um, I'm a huge fan of Old Saint Nick, the original stuff. The original stuff, um, yeah. Are some of our best friends. They were, they were visiting years ago, many five, six, probably even longer than that. Uh, Saint Bart's, and they had an Old Saint Nick pour there on their anniversary, and they come back, and I'd never seen it before because it's really foreign markets only, twenty years ago. Sure. And uh, they talked about it, and I was able to find a bottle on the bourbon black market uh, that I got them for their for an anniversary gift and they cracked it with us and we were drinking it was incredible and it was old Stitzel well or juice probably super fantastic uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and so have you had the winter rye uh, I, they've had several different winter ryes I've yeah. had one of them but I haven't had the, the fantastic released in Good, the last like great years. juice can't complain so so yeah great great brand uh, it's just awesome everything about it's awesome uh, nostalgia for it is awesome and so when I saw these newer editions and I was uh, everybody was I excited. Was, I was at Costco pandemic <laughs> buying, and I just happened <laughs> to poke my head in the liquor store there, and they had they just put them on the shelf, and so I just I'll take them all, and so that's where all of these came from, all five of these bottles, and then I have one of the classic. That one was actually on the ones. shelf. That was on the shelf. The seventeen year yeah, old. This was all on the shelf at Costco. Wow. So I bought four hundred dollars in panic food and two thousand dollars in panic whiskey. Panic whiskey. Yeah. 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 We've been there. Yeah. So uh, that's how I got these, and uh, so from what you've kind of told us. These are these are bottled by a new company that's kind of bought. No, the no, it's the same. Them. It's the same company. I mean, they're they're the. It's just the what, what, it. what happens is is you have twenty years ago there were so many distilleries who just had access to excess great whiskey. Right, people as consumers were not drinking nearly at the rate that they were producing, and they were producing fantastic spirits back then. And so what happened was, stuff would get sold off to brokers when they needed money. Hey man, we need money to expand this, to buy equipment. They sell sell stock to brokers. Then all these NDPs came about, these non-distilling producers, people who basically would buy great, just like what I did here with these rums. You would buy great products uh, and bottle them under your own brand, which is what they did here. And the collector, five years ago, 20 years ago, you would be able to get access to just some of the best bourbon ever put out. It's a Weller juice. I mean, just great stuff. And when they brought the brand back, they did not have access to the same stuff. And it's not just them. I mean, Willett suffered the same result. Uh, there's a few non-distilling producers who who basically were creating new products under the the famousness or under the the the, the pride or what's the word I'm looking for like when you ride someone's coattails the the days of yore you know <laughs> they were living off their, they were living off their old famous nostalgia, nostalgia. 
There you go. But now at a newer, more expensive price. So for those who don't know, that St. Nick's half bottle is like 500 bucks. Retail. Yeah. Retail. Wow. You know, that wasn't even secondary pricing. So they basically came out with a new line of products, not the same access to the same good juice. And you messaged me, and I warned you, and then you hit me back, and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I should have listened. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a. I'd already bought it by the time I messaged you. There, there wasn't a whole lot of thinking. Because it was St. Nick's credit card. This isn't bad in the car. Yeah, this no, isn't bad. This bad is the worst all. of the the bunch. It's not the worst of the bunch. This is the middle range of the bunch. I'm glad you started off with the middle range of the bunch because uh, I, I'm. I'd rather not. I'd rather just avoid the the gross one versus. Uh, like this is a good start. Good starting yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he was like, I uh, I panic bought two thousand dollars worth of whiskey, and I was like, yeah, I panic bought like four bottles of T.W. Samuels for, <laughs> for quarantine. So that's because you spent all your money on Windows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as soon as you said we we you spent so much on panic buying whiskey, I said we've all been there. He looked at me like I haven't been there. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> if I if it doesn't come in like one point seven five liters for plastic candles yeah. for under forty bucks. It's not in my. It's not in my house. What um, what, it, what is there an age on this? Uh, the eight. bottle in front. I think it's a. I think it's the eight. It's, it's not bad. I wonder where it's from. Yeah, it's good. I, it's got to be Canadian. For me, it just has that. That. No, no, no. This is bourbon. Kentucky, Bardstown. Eight years old. It's probably, um, 110 proof. Oh, I'm sure they cut it. it doesn't say <laughs> cash rank. I'd be willing to bet this is probably just um, Bard's down, Bar, you know, 1792 juice. I feel like uh, my whiskey collection is like, you know, like moms that have crystal bowls. So like, don't use the good china right now. Oh, sure. My whiskey collection is just like a pa- like a plastic knockoff of it, you know. And I'm like, hey, don't use the good china. Let's. Uh, I've got. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's not. It's not. It's not horrible. It's definitely young. Just more of a. Got some nail polish removal. Yeah, I mean it's no got it's got some. Oh yeah, that's what I meant by young. It's, it's got that youthful bite. But I mean, there's there's a lot of young out there. That eight years is not the youngest in the world by any means. So what was the that. price on the eight year? I would. I'm bad at looking at prices. I would say a hundred dollars. I think. So I had originally reached out to them about getting them on the show, and they they talked about coming on before the release, and then the word got out of of how it's just it's not the same product and then it's a bit of, it's at it's at a premium now so i just i i respectfully and kindly just turned down the interview really oh yeah. that would have been fun that would have been fun now i again it, they were expensive i don't think they lived up to the name sure if you, compared to something like this one which we can crack in a minute but um it was fun for me to to open these and try them oh That's sure why i brought them sure. to the show just so you yeah i'm not i'm not huge on 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 they're obviously look I, there's a lot of people nowadays who or there's a lot of specifically people who built the name off of just great bottles and now those bottles are gone and it's like well everyone's in the game now so good luck trying to compete so you know better than i do the laws um you know things like for a while whistle pig was bringing a canadian rye and they were selling it they're still uh, they're, they they're still bringing Canadian rye. They they stopped bringing in MGP. Actually, they might be aging some MGP. I know they still have some. How? But most of the single barrel picks now are all Alberta. So, how if they put product of Kentucky, it has to be Kentucky. Bourbon. So so there are a couple of state laws that, for instance, I give you a great example, Tennessee. In order to be called Tennessee whiskey, it has to go through the Lincoln County process and it has to be matured aged, distilled, bottled in Tennessee. Okay. Uh, if, in order to be called Tennessee whiskey within Tennessee, but theoretically, you could bottle or buy some stock from brokers from Tennessee, bring it out to California, bottle it there, sell it just in California, and call it Tennessee whiskey. That's where it was distilled. That's where it was originally aged. You're not breaking any rules. <coughs> Kentucky Bourbon. The problem is this company is in Kentucky, so in order to be called Kentucky Bourbon, you have to meet those that, okay. those requirements. I, I, I had read a rumor that they had sourced Canadian stock. This is not this. Canadian whiskey. This is definitely bourbon. Yeah, yeah. And you definitely couldn't call it bourbon if they had. Uh, oh, it says rye whiskey. 
Well, this is a this is a different bottle. one. That's oh, a different Pass bottle. You, yeah. I, was, I just got confused because I swear to God, I just yeah, saw yeah, bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that says Kentucky bourbon whiskey. Yeah, this so one says Kentucky bourbon whiskey. Okay. Yeah. So perhaps that might have been what I. This was might be from Alberta. Okay. Yeah. Right. If cool. This is from Canada, and it, and here's the thing. Yeah, it says product of Canada. Oh, right there. So yeah, yeah, yeah right under the label. So then it came from Alberta. So it's a bit tricky, right? So what does it mean to be produced by? Uh. I don't, I don't, I always conflate these two, but there are some people who will buy Canadian whiskey, like uh, Whistle Pig, bring it to Kentucky or uh, uh, Vermont, where they're at, age it there, bottle it there, blend it there, the whole nine yards. That's a product of the U.S. Right. Because you've done something to it. So they took, they took, was it aged prior to there? Does that matter? I mean, I'm sure there was some age on it. Okay. Sure. So if you <coughs> if you put it in a separate barrel here, bottle it here, package it here. If you if you if you do something to it, if you if there's a production done to it, right? You're blending it here, you're yeah. putting it in a second barrel, you're you're watering it down. Technically, you that pro, that's a product of uh, our rums. This is a product of the US. But really what we did is we bought and purchased single barrels that were from individual countries. It says Belize rum on the front, Barbados, Guyana aged in the Caribbean, or aged in uh, uh, Europe, brought here, bottled here, it's a product of the U.S. Right. It's the same thing with regular manufacturing. Like, uh, if you have, like, a bunch of... Oh, raw materials. You yeah. buy the raw materials, you bring it here, you make steel. Well, you can even, you can even like, manufacture them overseas, but as long as you assemble them, like the, the finished product here sure. in America, it's a made-in-USA product. product. There was a company called... Um, uh, Do- uh, God, uh, it was called Dark Rye. Dark Rye. It was from Jim Beam, uh, Alberta Dark Rye. I think that's what it was called. They would send sherry and old granddad bourbon from Kentucky Love up to Canada, granddad. bottle it there. So it was rye from Canada, from Alberta, which is owned by Jim Beam. They would bring old granddad bourbon, which is also made by Jim Beam, up to Canada with sherry. They would bottle it, blend it there, and it was called the Dark Rye Batch. And then it, it came to the U.S. as a product of Canada. And so therefore, because in, in the U.S., in order to call it a rye, it has to be from a brand new barrel. It can't be a used barrel. So those... Really? Like, yeah. You would think it would be the portion of grain that turned... Because that's how typically rye... <clears throat> well, yeah, you do have to have a portion of grain. There's other requirements. But in order to be called a rye whiskey, it's got to be at least 51% rye in a brand new barrel. It can't mm-hmm. be a used barrel. So when you're, you take into account adding sherry and, a, and 4% Jim, uh, 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 Basil Hayden, rye, or Old Granddad Rye, or I'm sorry, God, I can't talk today. You said Old Granddad. Old Granddad <coughs> Bourbon, right? Yeah. So they put added 4% bourbon to the mix and 1% sherry to rye in Canada, blended it. It's a Canadian rye. Interesting, even mm-hmm. though so even though it There's was a big difference between Canadian brands. rye. And, and what we would call a rye if it's right. produced here. So in this case, God, I'm, I've, there, for those listening, I may have very well butchered almost all of that. But this is rye whiskey, product of Canada, and most assuredly came from... Uh, Alberta. Alberta. It's very good. It's got caramel coloring added to it. I thought like a cast strength typically led to like a higher percentage. It does. And it's <clears> actually <throat> not a regulated term anymore. Okay, yeah, because this is like a 82... 82 proof. So this is ancient cask, but it very well could be yeah. cut. And well, it's definitely dosed with coloring, and uh, they call it a product of Canada. This legendary rye whiskey was crafted and bottled using crystal clear water, the finest ingredients, and small. So far, I'm not hating the very old St. Nick. Yeah. I mean, the first one we drank needed, you know, like a little bit of a uh, oh, coke. cut. Yeah, it's down to 82.8 proof. Go very light on this one. Not that it's bad. It's just that it's a poor. Um, it looks. It looks bad. It. <laughs> if you didn't know anything, you would drink this one and think this is the best. But. Oh really? Yeah. Knowing what we know, you drink it and you go. Well, it's definitely a used barrel for sure. Seven-year-old maple rye. It reminds oh, me of. Lord. It, it reminds me of Maple Crown. Like clearly, to, in, in my opinion. Some sort of flavoring was added. Um, the eight-year-old rye is not bad, but I, I guarantee that was more than a hundred bucks for that bottle. Every one of these was expensive. Yeah. yeah, and you can get you can get 
14 year old Canadian rye cask strength for 90 bucks from barrel and th that's my only thing is like I get it if you don't have access to the same stock but but charging a premium based off that's your old that, yeah. that's that's I think what it's bothered like a, a lot it, of people it's it, not that it's that bad it's not that bad it's, it's reasonable but it's just you charge it's such like a premium a for it it's a dessert yeah yeah I was gonna say this is the easiest to drink. Easiest to drink, it, but it doesn't just, taste horrible. It's definitely dosed with syrup, and they don't put they don't have to put that in the bottle. Poor Brandon, you want another poor Brandon? Let's drink the good stuff. Oh, absolutely, Brandon. I think um, I really I went back and listened to the episode that you contributed to off off camera. I like that idea a lot. I like the idea of the peanut gallery contributing off camera with their little side mic thing I, I really i think we should make it a more of a habit especially since brandon's the hottest person in the room <laughs> that's an uncomfortable statement uh, <laughs> so, i will say this when there's something that i can speak to intelligently sure. then i will but you guys are just so much more uh, versed in this than i am so if you want to talk about you know headlining or how you edit in adobe premiere then i'm all good for that oh yeah what's right. your workflow <laughs> <laughs> so uh brandon actually pointed out something a huge flaw in the way we work on this show we we you know we, when we present to advertisers we give them ratings we give them total accumulated views and earlier this year i hit the mark on youtube to actually start generating revenue Oh, you got a thousand followers, and uh, yeah, and I look at you knowing it. How oh, about yeah, that? Yeah. I I actually do edit video, so whenever go. I said, uh, "What's your workflow?" I was very interested. Actually, yeah, there we go. I, I know more about Adobe software than I do about high end whiskeys. Well, there all of go. our we get most of our views from the Bourbon Facebook world by posting to these groups, and, yeah. and our followers there. But there's actually no ad revenue from it whatsoever. It's uh, so. We're going to stop uploading the show to Facebook and just up upload to YouTube. And then share. And then share it on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, uh, the face. Well, oh, that makes sense. This is darker than death. Man. I'm not going to bore up the audience with like Facebook analytics and all that stuff. But typically, when you're sharing a YouTube link on Facebook, you get less. Yeah. Facebook throttles you down. Because yeah. they want you to use their video player. Yeah, because, because you stay, you, you, you're, yeah. and we talked about this, people are less likely to click on a link that takes them off the site that they're on. But, uh, but substantial difference in ad revenue. Yeah, well, for sure. Well, Facebook just opened up ad revenue, too. Um, they did, is, but it's it's so hard. Again, we're gonna we're just gonna dominate yeah, this conversation. Yeah. Hey, welcome <laughs> into advertising neat. This is, yeah. this is Brandon. Media, this is really media. interesting. So it's uh, it's over oak, so you can tell it's set in the yeah. barrel for that full seventeen years. Uh, it doesn't remind me. I mean, the nose reminds me of Stitzel Weller, but this is my favorite one of the. Oh three. yeah, it's 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 well, and it's the five hundred dollar yeah. bottle, so. There's a licorice anise note to this. Yeah, definitely in the, the licorice, licorice anise, yeah. Super strong. You already drank it all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I drink like a homeless person. So, so <laughs> Find a way to tie it Homeless plus. Homeless plus. <laughs> homeless yeah. plus, yeah, yeah. Homeless plus. Bougie homeless. Can you Airbnb a van? You know, I thought about that. Um, so it had a bed in it, right? Yeah, it had a whole bed. I remember it had oh. that button that would lower the bed. I got it. Oh, no, no, no. oh, so the, you you rode in the van before I like literally put a bed in it. We, yeah, yeah. We showed up somewhere and I made you drink in the back seat of it. Correct. Like and then all of a sudden the bed started laying down. Like I was about to get Bill Cosby, and I didn't. I mean, if it wasn't such a walk from the front seat to the back seat, maybe. But <laughs> man, those old vans were fantastic. <clears throat> They're so huge. So this is not bad. It's not bad. I don't know that I'd, I'd pay five hundred bucks for it, but. Uh, it's it's uh, it is what reminiscent of those old bottlings of, of decent Saint Nick. It's definitely put a fire in my chest. You know, probably gonna get in trouble. I cannot stop thinking about the licorice note. It's so, yeah, it it's, reminds me. It kind of reminds me of the Guyana. This Guyana is um, w we are speculating it's from a specific still. There's only one distillery in Guyana, Diamond Distillery, and Diamond Distillery has a specific rum still made from hard wood and it's the oldest rum pot still in the world it's been around for forever and it part it it de departs it, it parts it what's what's the it, what's the word i'm looking imparts. for imparts imparts 
it imparts a specific licorice anise note, and that's all I'm getting from this is like a ton of, ton of tannin, a ton of wood. But uh, I wish I knew how much it cost at um, on secondary sites. It's got to be at least a thousand bucks, right? I don't know. Possibly. Well, let's let's open this guy. This all guy, right. So now this, this is, is the legit. era, right? That's the previous era. So this is a twenty-five year. Um, this bottle's probably twenty years old. So this was probably made 45 years ago, which is cool. Which is very cool. Yeah. And we talked about that on this show, the idea of um, these bottles essentially being time capsules of a different era, right? I mean, I know that like in Laporte, which where me and Charles are, are from, uh, they did a time capsule like in 2000. Yeah. And they planned to open it in 2050, and it's full of like children's artwork and – Farts. I mean, I don't. I don't really like nothing. Nothing important. Nothing what a important. what a great prank! I'm gonna fart in the time capsule that way. But these. But but with booze, you are literally getting a a, a frozen moment of time. Yeah. Right, of when these things were made. If that bottle is 25 years old and the, or 20 years old and the liquid in it is 25 years old, I mean, this was borderline. as before the moon landing, right? Mm, I think uh, we Moonlight landed in 69. 69. Yeah. yeah, if we did. You know. Yeah, if we did. Yeah, that was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, if Elon if Elon can't do his his rocket ship because of rain, <laughs> yeah, freaking loser. I don't, yeah, come on. I'm just kidding. Elon's a saint. Mm. If you can get it open, yeah, it's uh, they did it differently back then. I still use the stereo strip, which I appreciate. People have asked us in the, the beer business to put the stair strips on. Uh oh. Uh, that's work. actually quite common. There's a. There you go. So while you're uh, fiddling with that, I may have a backup cork in my bag. Uh, what are you. What's next for Ingenious? Uh, what's next? So we talked about expansion. So we're we're doing distribution expansion. We're, we're seeing more. We're getting into more markets in the state. And yeah, we're going to have to doctor this guy up a little bit. So this is a like twenty five years. So it's aged oh, for twenty five years. Yeah. yeah, and it's a twenty year old bottle. Now this has that maple okay. note in it. That's not from adjuncts. Weird flavor, as you'd call them in beer. Ancient rare whiskey. Wow. Ancient reserve distilled date seventy three. Distilled in nineteen seventy three. Bottled in nineteen ninety nine. This is fantastic. Stuff. That is old Saint Nick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is what Makes I was hoping in to Santa get. Claus again. This is what a blind purchase and you spend two thousand dollars for because that's what you think. Now that is something that, uh, man, that is fantastic. Wow. Even with a touch of cork. Even with a touch yeah. of cork. But no worries. Listen, Justin, uh, I know I've kind of hit you up surprisingly with like forty-eight hours notice. It's we- it's been weird the last couple of months just trying to scramble around this whole thing and fit time in to do this uh, has been put put me in a position to be less prepared. Um, no excuses, but um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for what you're doing in the Houston beer scene. Seriously, oh, my, and my, uh, our Chuck, buddy, good yeah. seeing you, man. Good seeing you too. We'll man. figure out tomorrow, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, I, it's been you, you know, with Corona, you think you'd have all the time in the world to hang out with friends, but quite the opposite. Yeah, I mean, well, we hung out. Well, I mean, we social distance. You know, I sat on the other side of the table, but I went over to your house during Corona, and it was a, it was a breath of fresh air. You know, well, it was so. after the quarantine. It was after. The yeah, yeah, it wasn't during. Don't lockdown, don't get me lockdown. ripped apart online here. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you wear your mask? Well, I mean, uh, we're definitely two feet apart right now, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's, 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 I guess, yeah, that's the, a the fair point. The coronavirus only goes six feet forward. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like you need yeah. a French kiss you just to really piss <clears throat> off the yeah. crowd. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, thank you thank you again. And, uh, well, I guess we'll see what this uh, our beer turns out. Yeah, no, it's yeah. going to be good. Get this, peanut, get this peanut brittle thing working out. Yeah. I like the idea a lot. Yeah, I do too. For sure. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along.
you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. <laughs>